from Silicon Slopes, I'm Christina Ayanian with NASDAQ. And joining me is founder and vice chairman of Health Equity, Stephen Nealman. Stephen, thank you for joining us and welcome back. Thank you, Christina. Let's start off with the big picture. Talk to me about Health Equity and how the company really helps individuals, employers, and families. Thank you. You know, I, we've been at it for now 20 years, believe it or not. Congratulations, big milestone. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Remarkably though, we, I'm the founder, but there are people that have been at it with our now kind of increasingly growing company for 33 years. So we've done a lot of acquisitions and we're now looking after over 15 million families in the United States, which is pretty remarkable. And uh, you know, as we think about our, our scale and how we're helping people, it really comes down to helping them prepare to pay for their healthcare expenses that are growing every every day and then also to prepare for retirement and so we're doing a great job i think helping a lot of families in in that different way navigating healthcare can be so complex and you're really easing that process yeah no i think so and you know the first thing is is that when you realize that like 46 percent of american families can't afford a 500 dollars emergency healthcare expense which is pretty pretty frightening and so we're starting to prepare them and you know the industry now has over 100 billion dollars of hsa assets we manage uh, a good chunk of those right now. Uh, we're, we're, we're really starting to see some growth. And, and we just know that the more and more we help people pay for health care and then navigate the system, that the company's going to continue to grow. And we've got a fantastic team, That's honestly. Amazing. The work you're doing is incredible. What is your mission and vision? Our mission is nine beautiful words we always say. We save and improve lives by empowering health care consumers. And we really believe we do. And if you go back to that statistic I said a few minutes ago, there are too many Americans that don't have access to a health savings account, keeps them from really understanding their benefits, keeps them from maybe getting the preventative care they need, keeps them from maybe not wanting to go to receive emergency care because they just don't have the money and they don't understand it. And so by helping people understand it, having the funding available, and then going to get their preventative care, going to the doctor when they need to because they now have the capability to, we really believe we save and improve lives. On the vision side, we, we, we're kind of looking out to the year 2030, and the vision is pretty straightforward. We believe that we will make HSAs as widespread and popular as retirement accounts by the year 2030. So we're about halfway there. There's about 35 million HSAs in the country. There's about 65 million retirement accounts. So we're just grinding through it. We're the industry leader now. We're you know, over 8 million health savings accounts, and uh, that puts us at the top of the stack. But because of that, we feel like we have a great leadership position, and we need to keep dragging the industry along with this. And it's not just growing assets. It's teaching people to how to spend those better. It's teaching them how to invest their assets. It's teaching them how to grow. And so there's a huge educational piece to, to what we do, and, 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 and I think that's why we're the leader. You're really empowering individuals to take control of that healthcare journey. Yeah, that's the empowering part of it. So we save and improve lives by empowering healthcare consumers and empowering is, is so many different things. I mean, we're trying to really understand where they are on the journey. You know, a 23 year old has different needs than a 55 year old like I am. And so we're trying to meet them where they are and we're starting to use technology in a better way to say what kind of offerings can we offer to this generation versus this generation versus this generation that ultimately helps them better spend, save, and invest their healthcare dollars. And there's different ways to do that. So that's where we are. And by doing so, you're also growing as a company. You mentioned your acquisitions uh, previously. You've acquired a number of your customers and recently won last week. How does that fit into your overall strategic initiatives? Well, we, one of the, the things that we always talk about how many accounts we bring over when we're doing these portfolio transitions or how many assets under management we're adding to, to what, we're, what we're currently doing. But I think the thing that makes us most excited um, in this custodial effort is the teammates we're bringing on board. Just got off a plane this morning from Minneapolis. Uh, big shout out to the land of 10,000 lakes. I was up there with just a great team of people. That was from an acquisition we did over a year ago. Uh, we announced one a couple weeks ago that we're now starting to work through the process on. It's not done yet. We still need to get through approval and, and get it all done. But by 
reaching out to really the companies that kind of founded this industry. Health equity was certainly one of the founding um, companies in the industry. But then you go through the stack and you say all these companies that were out there you know, plowing ground in different areas of the country, we've acquired pretty much all of them. I mean, there's still some out there to do. We're going to keep working on, on these types of opportunities. But we bring in this thought leadership. We bring in you know, a list of over 130 health plans and 200 partners. If you look at our partner list, it's not just about health plans. It's about retirement companies. It's about benefit enrollment companies. And so if you look at health equity's list of partners, channel partners, uh, you know, we're far and away um, the leader in that. And that really comes back to our technology, believe it or not. Absolutely. The industry has certainly evolved through your leadership in this space. Where does the industry go from here? Look, like I said earlier, we think every American that has the capability to have a health savings account should have one. And these accounts, uh, the money is much more valuable in an HSA, like 40% more valuable, roughly, than it is in a 401k when you need to pay for your health care expenses. And, you know, the money comes out of your other retirement accounts, you have to pay tax on it. Unless it's like a Roth, but you paid tax on the way in. But with a health savings account, it goes in tax-free, grows tax-free, you spend it tax-free. And so I think the industry really goes in, in a couple different vectors. Number one, more accounts to more Americans, and then more contributions to those accounts, more investments, and just growth. And then we think the exciting part comes in where now we start to say to people, look, you've got this nest egg, and it's, it's this kind of personally owned, portable, investable nest egg. It's your money. It's not your employer's money. It's not the government's money. In fact, because of the tax benefits, the government's not even going to grab any of that money. Now we go to, now how do we help you spend it better? As you get, to, and, and part of it is, how do we help you avoid disease that would reduce your balance, and things like that. So we think that's the vector, is it's growing them, but then helping people better spend them. You're really that trusted partner. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, if you look at our net promoter surveys and things like that, people really do trust us because we're not in the way of denying their claims. We're not in the way of, of kind of really telling them bad news, but we are, in the way, we are there to help them in the middle of the night. We've been doing this 24-7 when they're just trying to figure this out to navigate and help them uh, kind of really embrace the health savings account. Absolutely. So what's next for Health Equity and its members? Look, I think that, you know, I know everyone's a little bit nervous about this whole AI stuff, but I, where we're trying to look at it and we're trying to say, how can we use technology, whether it's artificial intelligence or other components to really say, look, we have all these different uh, profiles, right? We have young working families. We have people that are starting to work towards being empty nesters and maybe the kids are growing up a little bit. Now we have people in retirement. How do we help them? How do we help them better spend, save, and invest uh, for their, for their health care needs? And I think that we're well positioned. We have an amazing access to data. We're very, very careful with the way we use that data. It all always has to be done under, under privacy. But just being able to help members on that journey, I think, is, is what's next. And of course, we're always going to be looking to the market. If, if there's innovations out there, we will embrace them. If there's opportunities to do acquisitions, we will embrace that. We're well positioned. We have a good balance sheet. And I think uh, we're well prepared to be a great leader for, for many years to come. And you are. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Now, Health Equity calls itself a B2B2C business. Talk to me more about that business model. Well, I mean, so I, I mentioned we have these 200 plus partners. And in addition to that, that doesn't count the 120,000 employers we work with. So you've got all of these Bs, right? Really important channel partners some of the largest health plans in the United States, some of the largest benefit administrators, and some of the largest retirement firms in the United States. That's the B2B that we do. And so we have teams of people that are just taking care of our business partners. But then we have this unique deal where we talked about 15 million American families that are walking around with a purple piece of plastic in their wallet or on their phone that says health equity. And so the consumers know us. They're like, oh, yeah, they're the people that are helping me look after my money and helping me grow my money. And then they're even trying to tell me how to spend it better. So I know health equity. I love that brand. They're looking after me. And the only way we get to the consumers is by going through the businesses. So it's that B to B to C rotation that is pretty special. And we think it's unique. I mean, normally, 
you're, you know, if you're a B2B business, you're kind of behind the scenes. If you're a B2C business, you don't have the leverage in some fantastic partners to help us bring this to those consumers. And so the B2B2C helps us on our acquisition cost. We're not having to spend all that money to go B2C. But when we um, embrace the consumer and they call us at 2 in the morning or they text us, we're there for them. They chat with us. We're there for them, right? And so I think that's a unique Part of our business model. It really shows just from the way that you're speaking that you really truly care about your consumers. Yeah, we love them. Uh, we hope they love us. I think they usually love us, but we also are there at times that can be very trying. I mean, imagine somebody, you know, just jumps into one of these accounts and uh, they're, it's January and they don't have a lot of money in it and they're trying to figure it out and all of a sudden, family member has an appendicitis. They now owe a bill. And they're trying to accumulate the money. And then we'll do things like help them schedule their payments and things like that. And we're looking at other ways to help them get through that, that hump. And then once they're over the hump and they've got money in their account, then it's like, oh, now how do we help you grow that money? And we have some great tools to do that with our uh, investment advisory uh, solution and things like that. So, so I think we're well positioned to kind of meet American consumers and families wherever they are kind of on that journey. It really is life-changing work. Well, I think it is, and, 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 we, and the, the, the reports are fantastic. When we get feedback from both our partners and our members, they are so thrilled to do business with Health Equity, but we, we, we will never sit on our laurels because we realize that this is a big, huge problem. I and mean, we're talking about a healthcare system that's spending almost $4 trillion a year. And so there's so much more opportunity to help people. And it's a combination of, like I said, helping them better spend, save, and invest for healthcare, but it's also helping them be more healthy. Because if people are more healthy and they understand their benefits, then we think over time, the cost of healthcare will start to normalize and people will have longer, better lives. And that gets, back, gets us back to our mission. We save and improve lives by empowering healthcare consumers. Well, we certainly are very proud to have you as a part of our NASDAQ family. <laughs> well, thank you for the partnership for so many years. I think we're coming up on uh, we'll be nine, nine and a half years now. Amazing, with NASDAQ. incredible, yeah. almost at that 10 year milestone. Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be able to come back and celebrate when we hit 10 years with yes, NASDAQ. Yes, absolutely. Looking forward to having you ring the bell. All right, <laughs> thank you. Christine. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye. <laughs>